Thomas Sinclair introduced the PRISM model, which takes into account that <clears throat> L1 students need to um, develop academically and cognitively in their L1 in order to be successful in L2. And it even goes a little further than that, that, um, you know, you can't just, um, you can't just teach um, a student in L2 without any other components included in a language. Um, so it's really important and the PRISM model reflects that there's actually four components to successfully um, acquiring a new language <clears throat> and that's um, uh, language development in both L1 and L2, cognitive development in L1 and L2, academic development in L1 and L2, and then the social and the social cultural um, aspect to language and all four of those components are interrelated. So for my graphic physical representation of the model, <clears throat> I um, related this to making bread. Um, we don't eat bread often in our home, but I thought, you know, it's something that <clears throat> is um, kind of part of who we are as Native Americans. So we're, I'm going to make fry bread and there's four ingredients to this um, bread recipe. And um, it's a simple recipe, but leaving out one ingredient would be um, pretty detrimental to the final outcome. Um, so I want to share um, how I think that um, my bread recipe represents the PRISM model. So the first ingredient is flour, and the second ingredient is salt, and the third is um, baking powder. And it's all held together by warm water. So for me, I view the warm water as the social and cultural component of the PRISM model. Um, it's pretty important and um, without it, it, um, it wouldn't be bread, it wouldn't stick together. And if there's too much of it, it just kind of overpowers the dough. Um, the second component of the PRISM model, the linguistic development, the language development, I, um, <clears throat> I decided to use flour. I think flour is the main ingredient, but I don't necessarily think that language um, development is the, I guess I would say flour is the second main ingredient, but I don't necessarily think that language development is the second most important component to the PRISM model. I just kind of chose flour because I think it's a big part of the PRISM model, not necessarily the most important part. <clears throat> and then I chose baking powder for the academic component. I think that, you know, the academic um, component, the third component of the model um, is to ensure that there's no delay academically and that um, according to the research provided by Thomas and Coyer, that um, academic development in a student's L1 is important in order for them to have like a baseline or base knowledge to be successful in L2 academic development. So the baking powder represents um, academic, uh, the academic component to the PRISM model. And the fourth component to the PRISM model is the cognitive development component. And I chose to use the ingredient in bread salt to represent this, um, this component of the model. Um, the cognitive development part of the model um, speaks to the um, 
to the research showing that it's really important that the cognitive development be developed through at least the elementary years in a student's L1. So again, I think that it's kind of similar to the academic development in that you, um, you need to be the you need to have a good baseline and support in order to take on a second language. So having this cognitive development in your first language ensures, um, ensures greater success of acquiring the second language. Um, so with those, um, that little uh, recap on the components of the PRISM model, I, I'm gonna um, start making my bread. So I didn't wanna record through the whole bread making process, but I will take some snapshots of uh, and some small clips of each process. And as I go, you'll see. Um, again, I just wanted to go over that the sociocultural component is going to be my water that holds the mix together and that the linguistic component is gonna be represented by the flour. The academic component is represented by the baking powder and the cognitive development is represented by the salt. So if there is a balance and a good mixture and proportion um, correctly that the bread will um, be edible. And I also want to note that I don't have like specific measurements that I just kind of, um, I guess eyeball it is the right term, depending on how much bread I'm making. So I think that really um, also speaks to the PRISM model as well, because um, I think the prison model gives you a guideline of these four components that a student needs, but really you might have to, um, and all four of them are necessary, but you might have to adjust a little bit in where a child gets um, support or if support is needed in one, um, one area over another more because they have they have that baseline in academic in their L1, or they have that cognitive development already. So I think like a recipe, you have to make adjustments, but you never change the ingredients. So let me take a little pause here and get my ingredients ready. <clears throat> So now I have my dry mix all mixed and ready to go. I'm going to add the water, also known as the social and cultural component to this prism model, and get my dough going. So as you can see, the dough is ready to be fried. It came out really nice. And follow me over here. So thank you for um, watching the video and listening to my representation of the PRISM model.